All right, so to start off with jewelry making, I want to make you know, make sure that you know where everything is. All right, there's obviously what's labeled right there. Um, this whole area and a little bit over here is kind of where you're gonna get most of the stuff you need for jewelry, okay? Uh, I just wanna make sure you know where it is. We have embroidery floss, which if you wanna make something a bit more organic looking um, with thread and, and floss, um, or you can use different strings. And I think we have uh, hemp in here. We have all sorts of different things that you can make uh, to go with. So I'm gonna cut now and show you what things that are in the cases. You have your beading, traditional beads. Uh, and then there are some more organic beads here. Some of them are um, rocks and things, and some of them have already been made. They're extra things that I had. If you have certain beads you like, you're welcome to bring them in. There's also a bunch in here. Uh, this bigger case on the bottom is where you're gonna find all of your pliers and uh, crimpers and things like that that you're gonna need to work with wire. It's also where all the wire is. Um, and just things that will help you with your stringing. And then we also have right here, this this uh, label on here, this, these are all the things and necessities that you're going to need when you're starting and ending your different uh, your different pieces of jewelry. This mixed media, if there's anything that you see in here that you like in the beads, you are welcome to go through this and see if you're looking for inspiration. This is all old stuff, but if you see anything you like, you're welcome to take any of it for stringing. For we're going to start with some basic um, just beading in general, okay? Um, and some of the supplies that you're going to want to get, depending on what you want to make, are going to be found in this lovely clasp box with all the clasps and things that you're going to need. Um, so you've got your lobster hooks, you've got your screw screw clasps, uh, you've got different uh, rings, jump rings. These will connect things together so that your clasps can hold. You can also use the hook, um, the hook and loop, the hook loop right here, which you can tie to the end of your necklaces. There's different crimp beads and I even got some earrings and earring backs out. You guys obviously have seen this before if you've familiar with e earrings okay there's also this magic stretchy cord bead and stretch okay so this is a really thin one you can always get the hemp if you'd rather practice with that um, up in the string area so what I am going to suggest is you have all of this and it's scissors and just be ready to do some focused now the first thing you want to do is decide what kind of beads you want to use okay because they all have different size holes in them okay so they're all different this one is much bigger and say this one, right? This one has a much thinner hole in it, okay? So you have to decide what kind. Now, the thinner ones will probably work with these, right? And so will the thicker ones, but they'll be very loose. So you wanna decide, do I wanna use a cord? Do I wanna use string? Do I wanna use hemp cord? What do I wanna use, okay? So for the sake of making it work, I'm going to use the bead cord. So the first thing I did is I pulled out how long I want this to be. Let's say I want it to fit around my neck. I'm going to measure around my neck and make sure that there's enough and enough slack and cut it depending on how long you want it to be, okay? Then you're going to have to make a knot that is bigger than the bead that you're trying to fit. And you're going to want a little bit of end left so that you can tie it onto one of these ends, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a knot So I looped it through and I have a knot. Now, if I put a bead on here with this knot, is it going to work? Nope, it goes right through. So I know that this probably won't work for these beads. I could try to knot it twice and see if that works, but there's no guarantee. So that tells me I'm probably, these are probably gonna be too big unless I start with a smaller one. Okay, so I'm gonna start and I'm gonna look, some of these are much smaller, like this yellow one has much smaller. You can tell it's got a much smaller hole in it. So I'm going to thread it through and this is where you've got to make sure it works so some of them will be a little bit well, there'll be something in the way and it might always not go through smoothly so you've got to either try to push it through with patience or you can take one of your tools this is a great uh, a great tool that you can bore through the hole with okay some of these pliers are really helpful for holding things too so that took some of the wood out and now it can fit through just fine and actually this one doesn't go through it's close I might want to put something else there because if I really pull on it, it goes through, yeah. So I'm going to want something even smaller on the end if I want to do this. Let's say I want to do this small pink one, okay? This one fits pretty good, and this is really small, and if you notice, this is too big for the hole, so it should work, so it should stay, all right? And then you're just going to go ahead and thread whatever ones you like to go through. Part of this is going to be creating a pattern. What kind of colors do you want? What kind of patterns do you want to create in your jewelry? So that is going to be something that you have to plan. For example, this necklace goes, it just alternates black and white, 
right? And then it stops right here, if you guys can see, and there's about five little ones, and then a black one, and then a white one, and then two black ones, and then a white one, and then a black one, and then five more white ones, and then it alternates. So you've got a pattern right in here, okay? And that's supposed to be the middle of it. So it's symmetrical, all right? So that was the pattern. And the best jewelry has very symmetrical patterns. So let's say you've finished with your bead and now you want to add a clasp, okay? So you've gotta make sure your, your knot is nice and tight, okay? And then you're going to thread. Again, you gotta make sure that it will fit through here. If it doesn't, you're probably going to have to tie one on or figure out a different knotting system, okay? So I fit this on here, does it go through? It does. So what I like to do is I like to tie a knot with this on. So it's actually tied to it. Okay, so now it's not really going anywhere. And I might even tie it twice. Okay, so this is where you have to really pay attention because it takes some coordination and some patience. Forgive me, I need a manicure. <laughs> mm -hmm, to do. So yes, you'll want to tie two on there and be careful because if you pull too tight, you could snap it. So, all right. Decided how tight it needs to be and you kind of marked that. You can pick the size of the ring that you want. Maybe you want to start with a smaller one and that's totally fine. And if you make it too short, the cool part is you can make a lot of these rings and can join them together if it's too short. That can help to make them longer because these ends can open up. You can see them. And you can use some of these tools to help you open up the ends if you need to. So again, you're gonna tie a knot around and make sure it stays in place. I like to tie it usually twice because the plastic can be a little slippery at times. Once you have them tied and they're pretty tight and you're pretty good with them, you can cut this off, cut off the plastic. All right, so that's where you take your, your scissors and you don't want to cut it too, too close because it could untie the knot, but you want to cut it close enough. And you'll know if it's too tight if it comes untied. Again, the plastic sometimes can be a little finicky with this. Okay, now that one might be, I might cut that a little too tight. Okay, so now I have a hook and I have an end. Okay, this again, this looks a little loose. With the plastic, you might even try a spot of hot glue to really hold it in place. Sometimes that can help um, to really solidify it if it comes loose. But then what you can do is you can always open these up. So let's say I want a bigger one, I wanna add a bigger one. You can find where they meet and you can take a tool and you can open it up and you can slide it and that will slide through. And then I'm gonna reclose it so it joins together and that will help. So now I've got a really good clasp that I can join together and I have a necklace. Obviously yours is gonna be much fuller than that. Next part of jewelry that's gonna be a really good one to know is jewelry knotting, okay, or macrame. All right, and I kind of started something right here so you can kind of see how the macrame looks. An example, now you can use the floss, you can use colors, any colors that you want. Or you can use hemp cord. I have a lot of different types of hemp cord. There's string too. So I'm using something bigger because it, you're gonna want that at first so that you're used to what you're doing. It's a lot easier to see what you're doing. And you're gonna wanna tie it so that you've got a lot left over. Now, this isn't gonna make something very long. It might make a bracelet, okay, with how long I made it. But what you're gonna want is a piece of tape. I would get masking tape because you're gonna be pulling on this and that's gonna be so much easier. You wanna measure out at least four or five strands together, all right? And there's many different ways that you can knot, okay? But you wanna make sure you establish your order of four here, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna make a four, all right? and then you're gonna weave under, these are the first two cords, and knot it up to the top, keeping the other two separate, okay? Then you're gonna take that same string and go on to the third cord, and again, knot it the same way, okay? You're going over and under and pull, okay? And again, we're going over and under and pull with the fourth string, okay? So then technically, this is your last one, okay? I'm doing this just because it's bigger. Sometimes the multiple colors helps a lot more, but you gotta keep the order straight, otherwise it's going to mess them up. So then you go to your next first string and it's the same thing, over and under and pull. And over to the next one and under and pull. And then to the next one, over and under and pull. All right, then we move on to the next one. Now eventually, if you just do it like this, over, under, pull, it will start to turn. 
that's kind of one thing about this macrame knot is that it will start to turn a little bit and it creates kind of a twist look. If you guys notice on my first one here, uh, you can tell that it's kind of twisted here, right? But the more knots you do in a row, the more it starts to straighten out with less of a turn. So you can also do double knots on them. So a lot of this, you're going to have to experiment and tell me what you decide, but if you do a bunch of different ones, you're not gonna like the way it, the way it turns out. So this requires a lot of focused attention for you to complete these, okay? You can have one of these on you if you're, if you're like, oh, I messed up. Um, one of these are good to help you um, take these out or a sharp object to help you undo these. This is where, for experimenting, why it's really good to use these because it's easier to unknot. Final idea is wire, okay? And wire can be used to twist uh, and make cool patterns to hold a pendant um, and to, or to hold a rock that maybe doesn't have a pendant, right? And create one to put on a necklace, all right? So that's gonna be up to you, like how you would wanna do that. But usually I do it around something that needs one. And so I've got three different types of wire. Uh, and you can bring in your own. I've got a few of these. Some of them I will open if you, if you go into the area where I, I keep all of these tools into that, the bigger box. I've got some other ones. This one already has one on it, but if you wanted to wrap wire around there, that could be cool. You can come up with your own if you'd like, but for practice purposes, maybe find a rock or uh, take one of these that are used for beading and practice with it. And you're going to measure out a lot of wire because you're not exactly sure how much you're gonna need but that's something that you just have to practice and get used to. Also pick the color wire that's gonna best match. So with this one, you can really go any way because of the color. The copper actually kind of clashes with it, so I'd probably go with this one. Uh, but one of the ones that you could go any way with is probably a more white one. Although silver would look cool, but I don't have a silver. All right, so if I'm choosing to do copper because it's open, find the end, and I'm gonna experiment with about how much I need here. Okay, I'm gonna cut off. I probably cut off for now about this much, okay? It's probably about a foot that I'm starting with, especially for one this small, okay? Now the cool part about this one is that it's got holes in it. So you can take advantage of the holes to help with creating the wire structure that you want, okay? You can put them through if that's what you wanna do and string them. Um, okay, so I started that and now this is very uneven, if you guys can see it. So I wanna push it back through and re-thread it here there we go so I can decide if I like that or not probably want to even it out on the ends so that I know that I have an equal amount on each side that's one of the first things that I would want to do I'm gonna back this up here. all right so then you can use these tools to kind of mold it and you're gonna come up with different patterns and ways to mold this now symmetry again is the key here if you look at the examples I showed you there's a decent amount of symmetry um, in what I'm doing, okay, with wrapping these. And so part of it is figuring that out. It may not be perfect, uh, but people tend to, to be drawn toward that. Um, I'm going to experiment with putting things through. I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm totally experimenting. Now, if you are like, this isn't working out for you, you're not sure what you're doing, again, look up some different wire patterns and find what you really like. I'm going to bring this around because I really like how that looks. Okay, and I know that I could use this part right here as part of the pendant, right? So this you're just gonna have to play with and decide what you like and what looks good. Uh, but again, symmetry, so that if you mark it down the middle and it's even on both sides, is usually what's going to look the best. Okay, and so you can, I took this around, and the biggest thing is that you have something in the middle to work with, okay? You may even wanna keep it that simple, but then how are you going to mark it off? Okay, how are you going to finish it? You can't just clip there and have two things hanging, right? What are some options? of things that you can do once you do that. If you turn them back up again, could you coil them? And if you coil them, that's all about using, you could just wrap, so like right here, I could just wrap around over and over again. So this takes a lot of what's called dexterity in your fingers, um, and it's just being able to wrap it so that it looks kind of clean, and luckily this wire is manipulative enough that you can, you can do that, okay? And if you can't use your fingers, again, use some of the pliers, and those should be able to help you as you go, okay? And then when you're done, this one's a cutter, okay? So if you wanna cut something off, and you feel like you're done with it, if you push down hard enough, it'll just cut the wire in half. And so I would probably wrap this one around too, and then I'd have a wrapped piece. So experiment with that as your third idea for 
jewelry. 